Hey everyone, and welcome back to this class, Unsupervised Machine Learning, Hidden Markov Models in Python. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the three problems of an HMM. In the next few lectures, we are going to discuss the solution to these three problems in depth. So at this point, it's important to know why we would want to solve these problems in the first place. What is their practical purpose? Problem number one is finding the probability of a sequence. This might sound abstract to you, but in fact it's not. We actually do this all the time. For example, suppose we are using a Gaussian distribution to measure the grades of everyone who took a math exam. We could then plug in a grade into the Gaussian formula. Note that this is not actually a probability, but a probability density, although that's not a particularly relevant distinction at this point. The probability of a data point is usually called the likelihood. The likelihood is used in supervised learning as well, for example, when you're building a Bayes classifier. That's actually an example we're going to do later in this course. As a side note, keep in mind that this likelihood probability is also our objective function. As you'll see later, what we're doing here is nothing but the usual maximum likelihood estimation. Problem number two is finding the most likely sequence of hidden states given an observation. Again, that might sound abstract, but in fact, it is quite practical. Take, for example, a parts of speech tagger. Remember that a part of speech is like a verb, noun, adjective, and so forth. We could create a model where the part of speech is the hidden state, and the actual word in a sentence is the observation. Therefore, using the solution to this problem, we could take a sentence as input and output the corresponding parts of speech tags. Another example is speech recognition. In this example, the words being spoken are the hidden states, and the audio signal makes up the observation. In order to map words to sounds, we would have to be able to split the input audio sequence into a sequence of syllables. So assume that this can be done, and that would make up your observation. Then, given this observation, we can use an HMM to recover which words were being spoken. Here's a classic example of why an HMM works for speech recognition, courtesy of the godfather of deep learning, Jeffrey Hinton. Jeffrey Hinton always used to use this example in his machine learning course, and it's great to be able to pass it on to the next generation. So consider the phrase, recognize speech, and another very similar sounding phrase, wreck a nice beach. Now obviously you can tell the difference because I'm purposely enunciating very carefully. But in this scenario, the observation sequences, meaning the actual sound signals, might be very similar or even exactly the same. And remember, the HMM's job is to return the most likely sequence of hidden states. So while both sequences of words, meaning the hidden states, could have led to the observation, we would still return recognize speech, since that's a much more likely phrase. The solution to problem number two solves this issue. Problem number three is training the model. As with any model, we have to find its parameters using the training data. The method by which we do this is quite typical. As I mentioned earlier, it's more or less maximum likelihood estimation. To give you a concrete example, let's suppose again that we're modeling the grades of every student who took some math exam. We model it as a Gaussian, and therefore, our job is to find the mean and variance, which are parameters of the Gaussian. We do this by setting up the likelihood function, let's call that L, and then we maximize L with respect to mu and sigma. That gives us the maximum likelihood estimate of mu and sigma. And therefore, this gives us yet another reason to solve problem number one. Because problem number one gives us the likelihood, this means that solving number one is necessary because we must be able to calculate our objective function so that we can maximize it. Of course, the HMM is a much more complex model than the simple Gaussian, so it's going to take a lot more work to figure out how to train one. Let's summarize this lecture. This lecture gave a brief description of the three problems involved in an HMM. 
Problem number one is how to find the probability of a sequence. This gives us the likelihood, and this also happens to be our objective function. Problem number two is how to find the most likely sequence of hidden states, given a sequence of observations. It's easy to see why we would want to do this if we consider an example such as parts of speech tagging or speech recognition. Problem number three is how to train the model. I'm sure you're familiar with this because it's something every machine learning model must do. And in our case, it's not really much more complicated than maximum likelihood estimation.